welcome back to the to Steve Fantastic Gaming here, and we're back in another VGRC new video, a budget of $1000 AMD build. And today, the parts are suggested by my friend David J, and he had some idea of pretty good compact design AMD build. So, what I came up with is a lot of things. Okay, here we go. First of all, CPU. We have AMD's 810 7850K 3.7 GHz quad core processor. It comes in $180 and it is overclockable to 4.7 GHz at maximum capacity, but it'll be very, very hot. So, since it's also AMD's APU series, also it makes a lot of heat, I had to go to get a liquid cooler. I got I went with Corsair's H60 54.0. CFM liquid CPU cooler comes in $875. This CPU cooler is very very compact, although it is not good as H75 from last video, but this is still very powerful liquid cooler. For the motherboard, we have Asus A88X Pro ATX FM2 Plus motherboard comes in $140. This is a full ATX power, sorry, full ATX size motherboard, so it has 4 or 8 RAM slots. To two to four graphic card slots, so you can upgrade it later on very easily. And you can add more graphic card if you want. For RAM, we have Kingston's XMP Blue Red Series 8 gigabyte, two times four gigabyte DDR3 1600 memory, comes in eighty-five dollars. This is very decent RAM, not a good RAM I'd say, because it doesn't have uh, enough heatsink to release the heat. Since it's an AMD build, you need a lot of cooling because AMD makes a lot of heat. And of course, this RAM does not have proper heat sink to cool it down. So you'll need to upgrade later on, but this is pretty cheap for its quality, so it's gonna show you. For hard drive, if Western Digital's Tavia Blue 1 terabyte 3.5 inch 7200 RPM internal hard drive comes in $59, and it'll last a couple years because this is a very, very reliable and stable hard drive. I personally like too. For graphic card, we have MSI's Radeon R9 270X 2GB Twin Rose R video card. It's a little outdated, although it'll probably handle a lot of games in maybe medium settings to medium settings to make it maybe high setting for like 60 to 100 frames per second. It's still fine. It comes in at $252. Very, very good price. For the case, case is pretty important because since it's a full ATX tower and AMD makes a lot of heat, I need a very very good uh, full tower, mid, mid to full tower. So I chose Cooler Masters Elite 311 Silver ATX mid tower case, comes in $51 and this is very very good and compact design. Also has very good airflow in the, in the system, it'll cool the, it hopefully cool the AMD CPU and graphic card down a little more. For power supply, with EVGA's 500 watts 80 plus bronze certified ATX power supply comes with $52. This is just a regular old power supply that everyone uses, you know, so I just wanted this. And for ROM drive, I want Asus DRW 24F1 SD DVD dash CD writer. Same as last video, because this is, I told you guys before, this is just a regular, regular uh, CD drive that everyone uses, so you just can't deny that. So overall, this build is pretty good, except if I had a little more money, I would have put it into graphic card or I could have upgraded the CPU into FX series, but thing is, FX minimum is $200, but thing is, I can only afford so much in $1,000 build budget, so it comes in total of $950, you still have $50 left over, so if you want to use to maybe upgrade your RAM, upgrade your cooler, maybe upgrade your graphic card, or whatever you want to do with it. So that's all I chose it and that's about it. In next video I will show up a, I will make a video of Intel's i5 build of thousand dollar budget, same budget. So stay tuned guys and this is the Fantastic Gaming and peace out.